all know the news is garbage. Week after week, we hear about fresh outrage, politicians behaving badly, massive accidents, weather disasters, the end of the world. The Dump is a weekly podcast for those who want to stay up to date on the news with a quick and dirty and funny TLDR. I'm your host, Rebecca Barnard. Join us as we take deep dives into the trash that is current events, interview the experts, sort the headlines, and compact it all together in a short, hot episode. And just like America, no material is ever recycled. The Dump, where all the news belongs. So subscribe now and listen every Sunday on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It's Unstable Tuppy with Sarah and Maggie. Please hold for an important message. Hi, you've reached Maggie's voicemail. I can't come to the phone right now, or I'm choosing to ignore your call. Leave a message after the tone. Hey, bestie. Um, I was just calling to give you a little pump up, a little boost in morale. You know, it's Virgo season, uh, which I am very excited about, seeing as I am a Virgo, but I can understand how it can be challenging for people who do not like to organize. And I'm saying you don't like to organize. I'm just saying as someone who always loses their keys, um, and can't find things. Anyways, I am getting off topic. I just want to call and say that you're great and that you're wonderful and awesome. I'm glad you're my best friend. I'm glad we're doing the podcast together. Oh, uh, this is Sarah Adams, by the way. End of message. Hey, welcome to Unstable Topics, a fast-paced, jam-packed, unhinged bestie podcast filled with facts, reacts, and made-up games in between. We're your hosts, Sarah and Maggie, and we're excited for you to join our best friend hangout, where we surprise one another with things we find interesting or hilarious just to see how the other will react. Our friendship might be totally stable, but you never know what your bestie might throw your way to knock you off your game. So come shake things up, learn something new, and laugh along with us. This is Unstable Topics. Hey, bestie. Hey, bestie. Something unstable that I have recently realized is birth order, being the youngest child, or being a younger sibling is an unstable place to be. Why do you say that? I've realized this. I am a younger sibling. You're a middle child, so you're kind of like you get to play both roles. But as the parent now... I get to see the dynamic between older siblings and younger siblings. And when I tell you how many lies my older children state as facts, which are then (laughs) completely gobbled up by their younger siblings as like this is now fact, it's, it's unreal. And it has made me recently question everything I believed from my brother as a child. So are they doing, are these lies do they think are facts or are they intentionally telling Robbie untruths both and it's also Arthur Arthur is a middle child so he falls prey to it from MJ and then also reiterates lies to Robbie so it's like by the time Robbie grows up he's going to just have no concept of anything (laughs) factual what's an example give me an example and wait and also are the source of these lies and also lies that they believe are true come from MJ and then trickle down the chain. No, everyone's making them up. Everyone's just coming. And it's not, (laughs) I won't say it's like intentionally deceiving. It's just things that are said with such fact tone. Interesting. It's almost as if like they're reading, it's almost like (laughs) this podcast. You know, it's interesting because I feel like the episode before this one, we were talking about how like I only make bold declarations when I'm 100% confident in it. And Mm -hmm. I feel like you made a note like you do that with anything, even if you don't know. Well, it is genetic (laughs) because like like one thing – like this is one that's like more – more a story. But Arthur was like, I cannot find my garbage truck monster truck. I can't find it. And MJ just goes, oh, it's on a shelf. Go look on a shelf. This child – Arthur spent 30 minutes looking on every shelf, every single shelf. And he was like, MJ, where is it? And she goes, on a shelf. I don't look on the shelf as if it was on a shelf. I go, MJ, did you see it on a shelf? And she goes, no, I just think that's where it is. (laughs) 
That is you. She is <laughs> you. You are her. This is a. Uh, but then Arthur, going. Arthur to his younger brother will be like, oh, you know what a gobble smirk is? And Robbie will be like, no, gobble smirk? And Arthur will be like, a gobble smirk is when, um, when something is super powerful and then a lightning bolt hits it and then it turns into a robot and it stomps around the city. And Robbie will just be like, oh, gobble smirk. Like as if that is a real thing, like a real word. Here's where this is different. Mm-hmm. So Arthur created this beautiful word. and Gobble smirk. And has given it meaning and definition. My child also does this a lot. Mm-hmm. Whatever. In his mind's eye, I'm sure he can see it. So to me, that's a normal kid thing to do. You know, come up, make up these imagination, imaginary right. words. Mm-hmm. What's interesting between the two is both are given with confidence, but the receiver of the information knows first gobble smirk isn't real. No. Robbie does not know it's not real. Robbie's going to go to school and his teacher's going to be like, what's a word that starts with guh, guh? And he's going to say gobble smirk. And then he's going to look like a dang fool in front of his whole class when they say that's not a word. Or or will they? the teacher goes, oh, that's an interesting word. What does that mean? And he gives a definition. And the whole class now is aware of this word. You speak it into existence. And 10 years down the line, Miriam Webster is going to add gobble smirk into the dictionary. The difference is when MJ said it's on a shelf with such confidence without knowing, in fact, it is on the shelf. She has that much stake. You know, she's like, I, when am I wrong? Right. Right. You know, it, it's true. And Arthur later found it in a bag and said, ah, MJ lied to me. <laughs> So at least he's discovered the truth. You know, though, I got to give it to MJ. Sets confidence because she's probably like, it should be on the shelf. There's probably That's a where shelf. you should put it. That's you should it put should it on a shelf. Along, on a shelf. So mm-hmm. I'm going to say on a shelf because that's where it should be. Thinking of things going the way they should. Are you ready for a fact? Absolutely. Okay, Sarah, I know you like things in order. Mm-hmm. And with your recent birthday, your birthday that's coming up, Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that this year might be the most perfect year for you and your Virgo sorting and organizing needs. Okay. Because when spelled out in English, the number 40 is the only number in which all of its letters are in alphabetical order. Oh, that's wild. What a wild perfect. It is that. Now I have, I've never thought of that ever, that, that, uh, truth of like alphabetizing a word but now i can't unhear it and now i'm not gonna be able to unsee it and i'm like wow it's the it is this year this is my year is your year it's gonna be it 40 is like the year of organizing the year of vacuuming like the year of putting things where they belong and that is what you excel at and love and i am so excited for this year for you because of this because i because i like to vacuum that's one of your <laughs> top favorite hobbies. I know this is about you. Is it a hobby? Is it, Maggie? I think it. I think it is a hobby. Okay. Well, you do like it, though, right? I mean, I mean don't important. don't change the. Our whole podcast oh, is built on <laughs> Dyson. Me like it, it is. No, no, I enjoy vacuuming because it cleans up all the piles of dog hair that never yes. cease. I get it because it's a nice com- completion feeling. If you didn't have a dog and you didn't have dog hair, do you think you would still enjoy vacuuming or still like vacuum as much as you do? That's a great question. I don't know if I would vacuum as often because my right now my children don't trample in as a lot of stuff because we haven't been going outside because of the heat. But I will say because our property has so many trees Mm -hmm. in a month, there's going to be so many leaves and tiny things inside my house. So I would I would like to venture to say it's such an easy way to clean. That I would still continue on back, you know. Still, you would still. I wouldn't take that personality trait away from me, you know. No, you'd find other. You'd find other joys of vacuum. You'd be like, let me vacuum the couch. Let me vacuum the drapes. I bet you already do that, though, don't you? Don't vacuum the drapes. Who am I? Who? What time do I I? have? What do you think? Who am I? Vacuum the couch because squirrel sits on the couch. (laughs) 
But yeah, so great. I'm excited about 40 even more now because of the way it's spelled. That's that's brilliant. Yeah. Do you think someone who do you think someone who created the spelling of 40 knew that it needed to be a certain way to get people through the hump? They knew that they needed to make it special to have people recognize. Some people don't recognize how powerful mm-hmm. a number 40 is. And so they were like, we need to make this number extra powerful for people to see it. Mm-hmm. And then very few people see it. And most people need it to be told in a fact slinging podcast like this. Are you ready to react? I am. So 40 is a word that is organized in alphabetical order. As a queen of organization, what is one of your favorite ways to organize? Jeez, Maggie. Way to to really hit the snooze button on this podcast. (laughs) Wait. I also love (laughs) Marie Kondo. (laughs) That's what what the people want to hear. Look. I Not th- yeah, there are lots of different ways. And I it- love baskets. I love yes. putting things in categories. I'm a big category person. And I like my stuff to not be seen. So mm-hmm. I'm very visually stimulated. And I like beauty. I like things to be pretty and beautiful, whatever that represents. It doesn't have to be one thing, but beautiful. So when you come into my house, like I have a toy cabinet because the doors can shut. But inside there are baskets and the toys are organized by category. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like those to be put away. So that I guess that's how my favorite way to organize is in containers by category. That's good. Yeah. I th- I've recently gotten really into like clean talk where you just watch people cleaning and organizing on reels and TikToks. Mm-hmm. It's. Mm-hmm. I think it is. I think this is going to blow up the podcast just by talking about, <laughs> talking about organizational talk. strategies. Oh, my God. Clean talk. I, you know, I hear from you also, I guess, because you've been watching Clean Talk. I didn't even know that was a thing. I am 40 almost. So maybe <laughs> I'm too old for it. I don't know. What is too old anymore? But the idea of like cleaning one room a day or doing one type of thing a day. Mm-hmm. So every day I only do one load of laundry unless there's like a massive accident or something and I need to do more, which throws the whole system off. But by doing one a day, I get I stay on top of it. It doesn't ever get overwhelming. That's a good strategy. People can learn a lot from you. As to Earth signs, Sarah and Maggie are always preparing, which is why it's time to play Till Death Do Us Part. Aw, why? The game where they interview potential replacement besties in case the other one kicks the can. Right, Maggie, your possible new bestie was the first woman to be hired as a full-time editorial staffer in the 60-year history of Dave Campbell's Texas football. She's the executive producer for the live streaming of over 1,500 high school sporting events, co-host of the all-female football show and podcast, Women Talking Football, the self-proclaimed graduate of the Jamie Adams School of Navigating the Monkey S show, talker of football, MC at all the sporting events, lover of golf and nice cold beers. Please welcome your possible new bestie, Ashley Pickle. Hello. Hi, mm-hmm. Ashley Pickle. I'm so excited to get to see you. I haven't seen you since, like, I think you were a student at UNT doing the games, the basketball game. Which football. simultaneously feels like yesterday and 700 years ago. So <laughs> it's nice to see you both again. <laughs> You have done a lot of sports between then and now. Thousands, thousands of sporting events. Tons of sporting events, any sport possible. Somehow people keep sticking a microphone in my face and saying, go for it. Um, so I'm sure there's a population that doesn't appreciate that and a population that hopefully does. So it's been it's been a wild, fast ride. But uh, yeah, over here at Dave Campbell's now and, and we're growing and doing exciting things. So the future's looking good. Good. Well, we we are kind of amateur sports journalists, so we have some very hard hitting questions for you. I would love to kick off with a with a sports question. I'm here for that. Okay. So, Ashley, you watch football, and football is for most of the world known as soccer. Uh, Mm -hmm. And if the Global Football Secret Society forced American football to change its name, and it was up to you, what would you change it to? Oh goodness. 
Told you we're hard hitting here at Unstable Topics. Yeah, that is that's a good one. Yeah. Um, the thing about football that's always irritated me that it's been called football is because how there's like one player that uses their foot, right, right, lit or two, I guess technically the difference between the kicker and the punter, but that is very semantics. Um, I, you can't call it handball because there's already a handball. <laughs> um, Something with gridiron. I think that the term gridiron is not used enough. We always talk about playing on the gridiron or the the Friday night lights on the gridiron or something, but some kind of gridiron ball, like it sounds her, you know, like it sounds tough. It sounds ready to go, but some kind of, yeah, gridiron ball, I think would that, you know, wave the American flag. We're playing some gridiron ball, boys. Like, I think that's it. it. That feels, (laughs) that feels more American football. Gridiron ball. I'm yeah, it does. It. I'm going to start calling my husband's fantasy football league fantasy gridiron ball league. I think that's that's something good. I think they could get behind that. Like men like to be men and do manly things and gridiron sounds manly. I, I, agree. I agree. And just so you know, <laughs> Ashley, uh, Maggie is keeping score. And Maggie, can you tell me about that answer? That uh, that answer got an A+. plus. Mm. Okay. So okay. We're off to, to a hot start. Yeah. Well, good, good start. We'll see how we go here with this next question. Okay. As I've mentioned, Ashley, you have done a lot of sports work, including in-game hosting for the Cotton Bowl, the NCAA Final Four, countless sideline reporting and commentary for ESPN+. So would you rather do commentary for the Westminster Dog Show or Mm. sideline reporting for a seven and under rec basketball league? Oh, goodness. Man, both of those have their up. There's only upside to both of those. So let's be very clear. Um, the Westminster Dog Show, that's a lot of pressure. There, You, you want to talk about the one thing I've always said about one, working in sports, two, being a woman in sports, is you have to know your stuff. Because if you mess up once, all eyes are on you. Mm-hmm. I would have to do some hardcore studying for the Westminster dog show because you don't want to use the wrong terminology. Like imagine accidentally like the difference between a poodle and a lab. Most people know that, but there's like multiple types of poodles. You can't be getting the poodles confused. The, the dog crowd will absolutely attack you. Um, so I would probably rather do the rec league because I think that that lends to my strength, which is more color commentary and being kind of quick on my feet. Um, I think that I could, I could do good with that. Okay. Yeah. And, um, just so you know, that is the correct answer. Okay, good. That was the correct answer. So you're two for two. And I Good. agree. Like people who go and show dogs or are really into dog show shows, dog showing, is that mm-hmm. the right terminology? I think so. See, we've already messed up. We're already down. We can't do it. We're not qualified. Don't worry, <laughs> American Kennel Club. We are not going to be commenting on Westminster. No, they, they can have that. You found your niche. You can stay there. I, I'll stay in mine. Speaking of niches, niches? Speaking niches. of niche, niches, niches, speaking of things, your <laughs> last name is Pickle, so I am sure you get this a lot, but I'm going to ask it anyways. The people want to know, would you rather be a human dill pickle or a human sweet pickle? Man, I, I would rather be a human dill pickle because you're going to make it you're going to make life a little bit more interesting. You can always be sweet. People can be sweet. A lot of people like sweet pickles personally. If we're talking about legitimately eating pickles, I don't like sweet pickles. I like sour. I'm not a big sweets fan. So, um I think dill because it keeps people on their toes a little bit and that's that's what I feel like I'm here on this earth to do is to just continuously keep people on their toes. Dill with it. Exactly. Oh yeah, God. there's a lot more. You know, and then and then you can be sweet when you want to. You know, you can you can show the people that you really care about that you're a sweet pickle, but the rest of the world, you got to look tough. Again, gridiron ball, dill pickle. I've got a vibe, I guess. <laughs> I I love it. <laughs> this vibe is a great vibe. Before we give you our final verdict, can Maggie, Maggie yes, and I yeah, 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 yeah. real quick? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. So Maggie, what do you think? Do you do you think she'd be a good? I mean, of thing? course. Like as soon as she said gridiron ball, I was like, this woman is quick. She's smart. She is a dill yeah. pickle in the flesh, and I think absolutely she'd be a great replacement bestie. Okay, Do you, would you would you like to tell her? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah is that okay. okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Ashley, Ashley, are you there? Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. yes, I'm here. Hi, well, I got you. Um, yeah. So we talked, and if something were to happen to me or to Sarah or just to our friendship completely imploding, we would love for you to be a replacement best friend. 
I, for one, am honored, truly, genuinely honored. And I guess my question, my follow up here, if I may, um, the fact that that's a perfect score, does that make me stable or like the stability of being completely unstable is the goal here? You are one of the most unstable people we've ever talked with. And that is an honor. That's yeah, honestly, is there like a ribbon I could get made for that to hang it up? You know, Ashley, nothing is too far for us to do. <laughs> and I would expect a ribbon in the mail that says number one unstable. As yes. I say that while looking at Maggie, because she is responsible for all mail here at Unstable Topics, <laughs> which in itself is an unstable That's, that's the thing. least stable thing we've set up is me being responsible <laughs> for mail. But I, I do have a list of mails to get out. Okay. Well, that's good. I, it, you know, if nothing else, be the brand. You yeah, have to be. It's one thing I've learned in this industry. It's be the brand. And if you continue to be unstable, then I'm here for that. Yeah. The brand <laughs> well, is Ashley, chaos. <laughs> you know, it really is. And speaking of non-chaotic things, where, Ashley, can people find you on social media? What do you have coming up that you want to plug? What's going on in the pickle pickle universe? Um, so my personal social media is all Ashley underscore pickle 12, um, just just how it sounds. Um, but the, the thing that we have coming up that we are incredibly excited for is we at Dave Campbell's Texas Football and Dave Campbell's Live have partnered with the University of North Texas. Um, and we are going to be doing our own Friday night live broadcast. It's going to be very NFL red zone type. Um, so the entire crew is going to be UNT students. So Mallory Hartley, my associate producer and I are teaching basically an internship course on what it's like to do every aspect of live production. And we'll have a two and a half hour live show broadcasted for free. F-R-E-E, full free, um, on texanlive.com every single Friday night of this upcoming Texas high school football season. So if you're into students getting opportunities, if you're into high school football, if you're into Texas gridiron ball, then I hope you'll come to uh, texanlive.com every Friday night from 7.30 to 10. Ashley, gosh, I'm just blown away at how professional you are. Like, I am <laughs> just kind of like, Wow. <laughs> Well, no, I'm Maggie, a number one unstable. That's that's unstable. the goal. <laughs> unstable professional. Maggie, can we sign up to be interns? I feel like we might need to do that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's a festy connection. Thanks for playing along. That's it for this episode. Wasn't that fun? Now it's time for you to subscribe and follow. And share this episode with a friend. Ooh, maybe even your bestie. Find us everywhere online at Unstable Topics. And for more antics, visit us at The Monthly Junk. Bye. Bye. Peace.